Hello, so I saw a pretty interesting article today and thought I would uh, give my thoughts on it. Um, the article is this one on autosport.com where the headline was Mercedes freed by F1 suspension upgrade. And it was particularly this bit which caught my attention. So, um, as you know, uh, Mercedes upgraded their side pods but also the front suspension at the same time and uh, what their engineering director have to say about it is that um, it's probably given us more freedom because the issue that we always had prior to that was getting good front end when you need it at the apex and good entry stability when you're hard on the brakes and turning in. That compromise was always something that we couldn't so resolve you're always left with either a weak rear on entry or a poor front at apex. So, uh, my interpretation of his words, weak rear on entry, uh, meaning oversteer, um, for example, due to too much pitch angle in the vehicle at the moment of turning in, what that would cause is more geometric load transfer from rear than front. Um, by geometric, uh, I mean the load transfer that occurs uh, without um, going through the springs and dampers. Um, it is so. Um, I, I talk about the three types of load transfer uh, in my vehicle dynamics course. Uh, the quickest is geometric load transfer. The second one is dynamic load transfer through the dampers, and the third is uh, can. Um, elastic uh, load transfer uh, f through the springs. Uh, so the drill, and uh, if you want to find more about it, then yeah, I suggest you go check out my course. But uh, um, yeah, the short version of it is, it is uh, load transfer that is purely going, purely a result of the geometry of the suspension and, and, and uh, the forces are um, transferred purely through the suspension arms. Um, and uh, so yeah, if if the vehicle is pitching a lot from um, uh, has significant uh, dive under braking, then uh, you will end up with more geometric load transfer at the rear uh, than the front, uh, relative to um, the nominal uh, situation. Um, and uh, there's probably also more aero ground effect at the front than the rear because the when when the vehicle is uh, diving, the front of the vehicle is sitting closer to the ground um, relative to the rear, and so all of this contributes to more oversteer. Um, and poor front at apex, uh, so that means um, understeer. Uh, so that is. Most likely just due to too much front roll sti splitness, st stiffness split uh, compared to the rear, uh, meaning you know more load transfer at the front. The front outer tire gets more saturated, um, you know, so you end up with more understeer. Or it could just be a general lack of grip from being too stiff uh, in general. Um, so clearly they were being shackled by only being able to use the springs to tune. Uh, between the braking dive and roll stiffness. And so that is what the um, anti-dive geometry front suspension upgrade have uh, given Mercedes in terms of um, freedom. Uh, so adding the front anti-dive, uh, I, I think it, it probably makes quite a difference because of how hard F1 cars brake uh, and how sensitive the aero um, can be. Um, and so what the anti-dive geometry allows uh, Mercedes to do is to basically increase the effective pitch stiffness under braking without having to use stiffer springs. Um, so this solves the weak rear on entry problem by reducing the pitch angle change under braking and it solves the poor front at apex problem uh, by allowing the use of softer, sprint sp softer front springs. Um, so the the thing to remember about anti dive is that it uh, it mainly works uh, when when the brakes are applied and there's um, uh, braking braking torque and braking forces being uh, applied through the front 
suspension arms, which is how the anti-dive is able to prevent the diving. Um, and so that effect goes away uh, once the driver is uh, at the apex and it's purely lateral load transfer and so then you're just onto the springs. Um, and let me see. Um, the only downside, uh, so I think, um, for example, in a road car, if you would put too much anti-dive, uh, it takes away from the feedback that the driver would get. Um, so uh, I think with an F1 car is different because um, yeah, the F1 car just breaks so much harder and therefore you will still end up with some, um, y you can probably use quite a bit more anti-dive with the F1 car than, than the regular car without running into the issue of um, lack of driver feedback. Um, just due to how how hard uh, F1 cars can break relative to a uh, road car. Um, so yeah, uh, that was my analysis. Hope it was interesting. Um, let me know in the comments um, your take. Uh, do you think I'm right? If you do, you think I'm wrong? Um, until next time.